Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on the Durham Student YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about commuting in Durham and what it's like in terms of distances, places you can live etc um, when at Durham University. So I think sometimes there can obviously be quite a lot of nerves about um, how far you might be in terms of like your accommodation to your lecture theatres, um, for example like whereabouts people might house in second and third year etc etc. The good news is, in my opinion, that Durham is an entirely walkable city distance wise. If you are able to and enjoy walking, it is easy to walk everywhere you need to go in Durham. So for example, the maximum distance I think you would ever need to walk in Durham is 40 minutes and that would be very uncommon. So you would only ever need to walk 40 minutes if say you lived right in the far depths of Gilesgate, which is one of the areas you could get a house um, and you were walking sort of right to the other side of campus or for example from where I lived which was on the nearer end of Gilesgate this year it took me about 40 minutes to walk to the business school but it's super unlikely that you would ever really be walking that sort of distance on a regular basis because if you know your department's far away when you're in second and third year you just won't pick a house that's that far away from like your particular department but especially in first year the commuting distances aren't that far I have mentioned this in a previous video but um, so for example, from Josephine Butler College or South College or Stevenson, any of the far uphill colleges, um, say you're walking into town or even walking to the train station, which is a little bit further, um, that will take you about 35 minutes, 40 minutes, absolute maximum. And so even that isn't that far. So like walking into town from there would take you about half an hour, um, but walking to the train station might take you about 40 minutes and that like that's the maximum that would take you. It would probably take you less if you're a fast walker um, and you do develop a knack for speed walking when you're in Durham. I think on average you probably walk 15 to 20 minutes to get wherever you want to go. There are exceptions. <laughs> I um, am in St Mary's College and in my first year when I lived in, um, it was so close for me to get to my lecture theatres and this is the same with sort of Grey, Collingwood, Trevs, Van Milder really, like all these colleges are fairly close to the science site but Mary's is the closest and it would literally not even take me five, like five minutes to get to my lecture theatres. So depending on what college you have chosen or what college you're going to choose if you haven't applied yet, um, your distances really won't be that far. And then obviously when you're selecting houses um, later into your university career, you obviously choose bearing in mind where your college is if you're someone who wants to be involved in college life, which I did. So I made sure that it was only 25 minutes to half an hour to walk to my college which for me isn't too bad and honestly it means that you keep quite fit. I have noticed a significant difference since coming back home and being in lockdown. I hadn't quite realised how much exercise I did just from walking around um, in Durham um, but that being said it's not like an intense amount um, and I wouldn't worry. The only time for me when it could get overwhelming is if um, I say had like multiple lectures in a day. If I were to walk from my house to my lecture, which was at 10 a.m., then walk back to have lunch and then walk back again for a 4 p.m. lecture, that would um, like involve quite a lot of walking then because I'd be walking there and back multiple times. So then I could spend a couple of hours walking a day or if you had activities on an evening. But that's just a matter of planning, bringing a packed lunch with you, um, so yeah, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now, if you don't want to walk so much or you're not able to walk as well, um, there are other options. So there are a lot of buses that run around Durham. Some routes are more established than others. And obviously if taking the buses is something that you're gonna be doing, um, it's obviously worth bearing that in mind when you choose your second and third year housing. 
but from where I lived in Gilesgate, there's a bus called the S1, um, or otherwise known as the Pink Bus, and it runs, basically, there are stops all up Gilesgate Bank, um, which is where I lived, and they take you straight up to all of the Hill Colleges. There are also buses that run from there into town, there are buses from town up to the Hill Colleges, so it's all really well connected. So if you want to get the bus, there's no need to worry about that. And then in terms of when you have like formal events and things, for Mary's our formal events are largely in college um, and so when you're living in college that means there isn't a commute um, but if you're living out um, like I was walking half an hour in your heels or in like full dresses and gowns maybe wasn't appealing and so we would often catch an uber but you could fit three people or even four people in an uber depending on like how many people are in your house and the combinations you need to do um but it would cost about five or six pounds so between us that wasn't that expensive either so if you have those kind of events that's also a reasonable option for getting around too i hope that's kind of explained the picture a bit to you there's not loads to say about this but the like traveling around durham's really easy the train station's well connected if you want to go on trips to newcastle um, or you can get the train if you want to go on trips to like see them in the local areas you can get the bus so you've really got a lot of options when studying at Durham in terms of commuting. I hope this is helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye!